Go ahead, Scott. Derek uh, Piper on deck. Go ahead, Scott. Hey, George, you know, with Kofi and foul trouble there in the first half, you, you know, kind of had to step into maybe a, a bigger role. Just what, what were you feeling on the court where I mean, you think you found a rhythm, found some confidence tonight? Um, just had to step up, you know, obviously. Uh, Kofi is a great player. He's not going to have a lot of nights like this, but when he does, other players have to step up, and uh, it, it was me tonight. And I just came out ready, stayed ready, and uh, stepped up for him. But he's not going to have a lot of nights like this. I promise that. Derek Piper, you're up. Brandon, you're on deck. Hey, Georgie, what do you feel like as a team you can take from a game like this, learn from, and, and better yourselves going forward? Um, a lot of a lot of a lot of things, you know, maybe mistakes, a lot of mistakes, uh, details, you know, small details uh, matter in big games like this. And when you make uh, mistakes, even the littlest mistakes cost you a lot. And they did cost us a lot today. And uh, we have to clean them up. Uh, pick and roll defense was not great. Uh, they beat us on that. And just overall five for 40 minutes, you know. Didn't seem like you even hesitated on some of those jump shots. Is that something that's been going for you in practice? Um, how, how did that present itself and you, and you being able to knock it down? Mm, I don't know. I just didn't think about it. Uh, I just went out there, uh, played my heart out, uh, and it kind of just happened. I was not thinking, oh, I'm a shooter or not. You know, it just uh, I was just flowing in the game. Nice, George. OK, Brandon, you're up. And then uh, Gavin on deck. Go ahead, Brandon. Hey, Georgie, uh, during that run in the second half, what kind of went right for Baylor? Um, they opened the rebound it really well, too. They got uh, in the second half, I think, uh, 13 off the rebounds. Uh, we had to block them out better. Uh, don't give them second chances. You know, when you give teams like that second chance, they're going to make you pay for it. So uh, they offensive the rebound in the second half really well. That, thanks, Georgie. Hey, okay, Gavin, you're up. Hey, Georgie, good to see you. Um, obviously a tough result. Um, it seemed like down the stretch, Baylor was able to really get a lot of guys going that were able to, to shoot from the perimeter. Uh, how tough was it to stick with everybody when everybody's on like that? Uh, that was, that's what great teams do, do you know, high major teams. Uh, and uh, we are a high, high major team and uh, we will play high major team. That's gonna do that. Uh, we gotta be able to defend that, you know? Uh, we gotta be able to do a uh, better job, you know, boxing them out. And don't let him get a second shot, you know, because when you give him a first shot, it's already hard to defend him. But if you give him a second chance, it's even harder. So um, that's high major teams, you know, that's what they do. That's what we do. So that's high level uh, college basketball. Thanks. Okay, Alec and then Gino. Go ahead, Alec. Thanks, Kent. Hey, Georgie. Um, obviously, this Baylor team last year was potentially a number one seed. What did tonight show you that maybe you guys need to do to get to that level? Which mean? Uh, last season, you know, they won 23 straight Big 12 games, looked like they were a potential number one seed, return a lot of those same players. Um, just to get to that level, what do you think you guys need to grow on? Who, us or them? You guys, yeah. Um, I think uh, just clean up, as I said, clean up little details, little mistakes. Uh, and uh, I mean, I think we are right there. You know, we are number one, five, number five team in the nation. So we are right there, four spots. So we just have to clean up uh, those little little mistakes that we made. Um, and we obviously know, you know, Trent not going to have a night like that with six turnovers. Kofi not going to have nights like that, you know, um, playing, playing like that. Ace not going to shoot two from 11, uh, those games. So we are right there, man. So we just have to clean those little mistakes up and we're going to be good. Thanks, Georgie. Okay, Gino and then Matt Stevens. Go ahead, Gino. You're on mute, Dean. Gino. Can you hear me now? Yeah, go ahead. So, sorry about that. Uh, there are very unique times in this country, and with no fans in the stands tonight, you guys and Baylor had to create your own energy tonight, and it showed. How big was that for you guys to be able to have that energy and how that, how that helped you guys in the first half with the run that you made? Uh, that is something that we take pride in, you know, our bench, uh, not only this year, but uh, every year that I've been here and even before coaches, teams always have 
uh, had a lot of pride in their bench. You know, we always, the refs always tell us to sit down and go out of the court. And um, we kind of always have that. There's nothing new to us, especially now it's really needed. Uh, obviously we're playing without fans, so it's huge for us. But we, I feel like we always have had that and we will have that, we take pride in that. All right, thank you. Okay, and we'll finish up with Matt Stevens. Go ahead, Matt, this will be the final question for Georgie. Georgie, it's pretty clear after this one that teams are going to run you and Kofi off of ball screens, you know, all, you know, as much as they can. What can you do defensively and what can the team do defensively to, to kind of defend that a little bit better than you did tonight? Uh, I can't really answer that question right now, but we will get in the gym tomorrow, watch film, watch a lot of film, get with coaches, um, get on the field and uh, see what we have to do. I can't really answer that right now, but once I see the film and once we – get together with coaches and the team, we'll figure that out. All right, thank you, Georgie, appreciate it. Thank you. Okay, Brad's on his way. He'll be here momentarily. We'll start the same order uh, that we we had last time. Did you get G back or did he walk back? Yeah, he, he's okay. uh, walking now. <laughs> okay, Kent, quick, right. quick turn around. And coach, Coach, if you want to start the statement. Statement, then we'll open up for questions. Yeah, it was a um, it was a dog fight for uh, for a good portion of the game. Uh, I give a lot of credit to Baylor. Um, there's a reason they won 23 straight, and uh, uh, they showed their uh, their tenacity, their toughness, their heart. Um, and uh, you know, there was a four minute stretch there. I think we're tied 43 all. Both teams are, are fighting and grinding and. And uh, nothing's easy, and uh, it was loose balls. And uh, where we were so good in the first half, uh, and being really kind of uh, dominant on the glass uh, in that first half, and then the second half, right in that stretch, everything flipped, and uh, uh, that got them a, a couple of clean looks at threes. Uh, then we had a turnover or two, and uh, I thought Flagler for them was uh, instrumental coming off the bench. Uh, but, um, you know, it was, um, uh, it was a frustrating night. You know, we're not going to win many games when Iowa goes six of 18 and, and Adam Miller goes two for 11 and Trent has six turnovers. Um, uh, you know, that's, that's a, that's a tough night for our guards, but, uh, I did find out, uh, I love our freshmen and, uh, Adam's going to be, Adam's going to be just fine. Uh, I'm really proud of Andre Curbelo. 
coming off a concussion. He has not had a ton of practice time, uh, being out eight days with a concussion and then uh, tweaking his ankle, didn't practice most of the week. Uh, and then I thought Coleman Hawkins was uh, uh, was terrific and, and, and I saw some grit in him. So uh, Georgie was outstanding. Uh, we, that, that's old Georgie that we all know and love. And, uh, you know, in a game where Kofi was really a, a non-factor because of early fouls, uh, Georgie gave us a nice lift. So, uh, you know, all in all, it was, uh, it, it's a great opportunity to learn. We, 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 we saw some great, great guards who were veterans and it was great for our young guys. And uh, I'm disappointed in our loose balls in the second half, but, uh, and that was the ball game. But again, uh, give Baylor all the credit for that. Okay, we'll open up uh, Derek Piper first, Robert Rosenthal on deck, and Brad Sturdy in the hole. Go ahead, Derek. Coach, you mentioned Georgie there. What did you see out of him tonight with his mindset, his approach? What allowed him to have that success tonight? You know, Derek, I, I sat in the lobby. I, I went on a couple of walks today. Uh, you know, it gets pretty tough sitting in hotels uh, for a 10 p.m. game and went on a couple of walks. And then the last one I came back, and Georgie was just sitting there. He was talking about how uptight he was and nervous and he had butterflies and how much he loved that. And he, he loves these big games and, and those moments. And so I knew he was ready. And, you know, I think any really good player gets excited for these games and has some butterflies and uh, his focus was incredible. And, and uh, you know, we got him the ball. We, we kept trying to get him the ball uh, in, in the first half, uh, but uh you know, when he caught it, it was it was either a foul or it was a bucket. And defensively, he played great as well. So uh, I'm uh, I'm really excited about uh, moving forward with Georgie. You know, this is one of the best defenses in the country. What did you see about the way they attacked Io and made all of his looks tough, and and obviously didn't allow him to force him into a lot of tough looks? Well, I mean, Io better get used to that. I was going to see that all all night long or all year long. Uh, these guys do it at a, at a little different uh, capacity. They 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 switched everything, um, and really jumped him uh, on the sideline uh, and kept us pinned there. Uh, most teams don't have that kind of that kind of firepower to do that. Uh, but uh, again, Mitchell's a, a, an incredible ball hawk, uh, vital. Uh, you know, is is plays so much bigger than he is, and so athletic and strong. Uh, but, um, you know, again, it was, it was them. We knew it was coming. Uh, we probably over dribbled, uh, trying to do too much, but, um, you know, we got to get the ball popping and we'll clean some of that stuff up there. Thanks, coach. Okay. Robert, you're up, uh, you're up and Brad Sturdy on deck. Go ahead, Robert. Coach, you talked about that stretch in the second half, specifically it was 56, 51, and they scored seven points in 28 seconds to make it. A 12 point game, you took a timeout. What was your message in that timeout? Just settle down. Um, you know, I, I thought if we could continue to get some stops, um, that we had we had an opportunity to get back in it. Um, you know, they've kind of shown that tendency at different times. Uh, but again, we missed we missed some we missed some easy baskets, some easy opportunities. And um, you know, it, it, we couldn't get the stop we needed. Uh, we blew, we messed up a couple ball screen coverages. Uh, that let them get a couple easy looks. We would score, and then they would come down and score. And uh, again, they they controlled that. And uh, first half, they didn't get any of those looks. And uh, again, I think that's one of the things where our young guys got to got to understand it's a fight. You can't make defensive mistakes, and if you do, a guy like Butler or Flagler, uh, they're going they're going to take advantage of you. Thanks. Okay, Brad, you're up. Scott Ritchie on deck. Go ahead, Brad. Coach Andre Corbello against, uh, you know, arguably one of the best defenses in the country is able to get in the lane um, and attack. What does that show, you know, about what he, how he's grown even in the last week, even if without practice, how he learned from film going against a team like this and having the ability to, you know, create so much against uh, a great defense. Brad, he's elite now. And I'm just, I'm just throwing that out there. He's really good. And um, I'm so encouraged by that. Um, and 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 we see it in practice when he's when he's when he's been healthy, uh, where he's he's it's been scary, and uh, so I'm excited about that for the future because he is really a load to handle in ball screens. Uh, one defender uh, has a hard time with him, and he's and he's such a good passer, and uh, uh, that that gives us another option. And again, 
you know, moving forward, we'll continue to see, uh, you know, guys load up on IO. And I welcome that challenge with, with Curbelo and, and what he's capable of. And uh, uh, that'll be fun to see as he continues to grow. Okay, Thanks, Scott, Richie. Scott Richie, you're up and then Brandon on deck. Hey, Brad, kind of, you know, revisit there where Baylor's you know, lead got to double figures. It's how disappointing was it where you know, it came with, you know, second chance three and then, you know, off a of turnover where they were able to maybe generate some points off of you know, mistakes there. That's what they do. They, that's what they do. That's what, that's what good basketball teams do. Uh, you can't turn it over. Um, I don't know what we have. 12 tonight. I think we had eight at half. Uh, Tritt had an unusual, extremely unusual night for him. Uh, he usually doesn't let that, that kind of quickness or athleticism bother him and got a little too deep. Uh, but uh, again, that's um, uh, a tribute to them. But uh, again, you, you, you have a turnover, you miss a ball screen coverage, you give up a second chance. Um, and, and that's all we've been talking about was 50, 50 balls. That was our whole key for the game was winning that battle. We were incredible the first half. And, um, again, it's, it's, it's tough when we got one defensive rebound from Georgie and we got three from Kofi, um, you know, we're not going to, uh, we're not going to win many games with that. Yeah. You know, with Georgie, you know, having kind of this throwback performance, the uh, reminiscent of his freshman year, just how much was that needed you know, for him to step up into the opportunity created when, when Kofi was in foul trouble. That's what really good teammates do. And I, I've been saying this all along, Kofi's, um, Kofi's a tremendous player. Uh, we might have the best backup and we, we played them opposite each other almost every day in practice just early on because of injuries and, and not, having, uh, not having Jermaine, not having other guys to go against. So, uh, you know, as, 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 as I threw out there late, uh, we'll start being being able to play some of those guys together, both those guys together again, and and uh, you know I think every time Georgie catches the ball in the post, he's going to score. So uh, you know I like that, like having that option. Thank you. Okay, Brandon, you're up. Joey Wagner on deck. Go ahead, Brandon. It was a kind of an off scoring night for Kofi tonight. Uh, how can you guys kind of get him going the next game? Keeping him out of foul trouble would help. I mean, it's really that simple. I mean. It's, it's sometimes it's really, really hard to find that mojo again when you're, uh, uh, when you set so long, I think he played six minutes maybe in the first half and, and um, you know, and, and the, the positive thing was that Georgie played so well, I didn't need to bring him back in. And I was prepared to bring him back in with two, uh, but, but Georgie was fantastic. And, uh, and I was able to, to keep him, uh, to keep him on the bench, but uh, you know that's tough, and and uh, that's that's part of uh, you know growing up and and understanding you got to stay dialed in. And uh, uh, again, they did a lot they did a lot of good things to take him away as well. And then uh, Davion Mitchell had 15 points and four or five from three with seven assists. Were you surprised with how well he shot the ball tonight? No, he's a really good player. Uh, the only thing he does poorly is free throws. Uh, he's an elite defender. He's one of the best in the country. Uh, he makes open shots. And uh, for whatever reason, he's a 50% free throw shooter. But uh, he's a really good player. He's, he's the, heart of the heart and soul of their team. And, um, you know, when you got guys like uh, Tig and you got guys that, that Butler and now Flagler, uh, man, that's, that's, that's some pretty good weapons to, to uh, throw the ball to. So. He's a good player. Okay, Joey, you're up. We're going to try to be quick here. Go ahead, Joey. Hey, Brad, when Baylor gets up eight or up 10, does it feel like being down eight or 10 to other teams with the way they play defense? Does it feel like more? I, I guess what's that like from your view? No, I, it didn't feel any different. I, you know, I thought we still had opportunities. We had to get stops. And, uh, you know, I mean, we, we, we scored enough in that stretch to, to, to be able to kind of work our way back in and, you know, they missed a free throw here, here, there. And, and, and yet we could never get the stop we needed. And uh, during that stretch, we're going to go back on in film and we'll show our guys tomorrow. It was three or four just blown ball screen assignments uh, that we didn't handle. And, uh, you know, and then there was a, there was a lob dunk uh, again, and that's off a of blown ball screen. You know, we were trying to do the same thing. They were pin them on the sideline 
and uh, we, we just didn't handle that very well. Okay, we'll go with uh, Matt and Nico, and that'll be wrap it up. Go ahead, Matt. Brad, you've mentioned ball screen defense repeatedly. I, I'm curious if that's something that's still evolving with your team, or is that something we saw tonight out of character from what you've seen every day in practice? We've seen elite guards. Uh, you know, let's not forget Jason Preston's really, really good as well. Um, you know, and the, our big's got a responsibility um, in that as well. Uh, but, uh, you know, again, it's, it's, it's scout-based. Uh, you know, and we, we've got to continue to get better at it. And uh, it's, 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 it's two ways. It's not just the bigs, it's the guards having to, having to handle that, not get screened. Uh, and again, we, we, can spend, uh, we can spend all day on it in practice, but until we get out there live and see it, um, you know, we, we've, got to, we've got to identify it a little better. Okay, this will be the final question. We'll go with uh, Nico, this will wrap it up. Go ahead, Nico. Brad, Io said on Tuesday that this team believes it can be number one in the country. Georgie saying that, you know, you guys expected to win and the, the locker room was pretty down. What did you see from that locker room? What was your message after the game? And kind of how do you want to see those guys respond moving forward, especially with Duke next week? Yeah, you're not going to you're not going to beat these caliber of teams losing 50 50 battles. That was my main message. I you know, it, it's it's uh it's all about what we're trying to accomplish, and that's being able to win when you don't shoot the ball well. And it's really that simple. And you've got to figure out how to beat really good teams when that ball doesn't go in. And you know, and, and I'm not, I'm, I'm not trying to beat a dead horse, but Io goes six of eighteen, and Adam goes two for eleven, so that's eight for thirty basically uh, from our two of our starting guards. That's that's a night we didn't shoot the ball very well. So we have to be that dialed in defensively. And we have to maximize opportunities and loose balls. And, and um, we didn't do that. So therefore, they have more points on the scoreboard than we do. All right. Thank you, Coach. Appreciate it. We'll see you on the bus. Thank you. Thank you. OK, thanks, everyone. That'll wrap it up tonight. Appreciate it. Appreciate your time.